What is up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Mean Enough Podcast. I am Ace. This is RB3. And this is the podcast where we talk about your favorite filmmakers and the deeper meaning within their films. And this episode, we're talking about two of my favorite, or one of my favorites. It's my favorite comedy duo. It's Phil Lord and Chris Miller. These are my favorite comedy duos. Wow, over the Farley Brothers? Um, dude, honestly, I'm going to talk about their films, but like, you still can name like one. I, I, I can't, I'm struggling to find one movie from the Phil Lord and Miller that I'm like, that's a bad movie. Mm. Or that's like a disappointing movie. Like, I've, I've rewatched all these movies, and I, I was texting you about it, and I'm just like, bro, I can't. Like, I can't. I can't handle how like every single one of their movies... It's not just good, but it's great, in my opinion, obviously. But mm. I'm, I'm just saying it. I, I, I think these are my favorite comedy duo directors. This is our first uh, duo we've done. The yeah, as well, it is our so. first duo. The reason we're doing this, guys, is because it's Han Solo month. It's Star Wars month. I don't know. Because Han Solo is coming up soon. <laughs> yeah, and we, we're trying to get those, uh, those, those views. Yeah. That's, that's essentially what's, what's going on. Exactly, right? because let's, let's face it, guys. We're a little bit on the on the bottom end of that, but uh, we're gonna make up for it with this episode, hopefully, because this episode's gonna kill, man. Oh, yeah. All them Lord and Miller fans out there. Yeah, come on, Lord and Miller. But uh, but Give uh, us a retweet. honestly, it, it's it, these guys were attached to do Han Solo. I have a lot of thoughts about that. Unfortunately, I'm not on movie talk. I'm not doing the schmo so, so I can't get my thoughts out after when that actually went down, when the firing of Lord and Miller went down from Lucasfilm off Han Solo. But now, even though it's been like forever since they've been fired i can finally express my thoughts and i'm going to express it but before we do that guys we're going to read your comments from last week's episode which was all about donald glover all about atlanta and we got seven comments yeah <laughs> let's read seven, all seven, seven no nice we're not one. even going to read all seven but yeah. let's start with uh dave tran now uh it says thank you for the timely podcast i love atlanta atlanta Thanks, Collider TV Talk, Josh, David, Sinead, Emma, Sasha, for hey. turning me on to this. Interesting. I had just watched the SNL and the music video. Thanks for breaking that down, RB3. Yeah, interesting that I didn't know Collider TV Talk even mentioned Atlanta. Because I, yeah. I, I, I saw a few episodes of Collider TV Talk, but that's cool that they yeah, mentioned Yeah, is a big fan. He always, oh, that's dope. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. apparently he like, watches every episode and stuff. R.I.P. Clyde TV Talk. R.I.P. Man. Yeah. R.I.P. I haven't seen David Griffin in a long time. David Griffin, man. You know what? Yeah. I want to see him at a. At, are you going to Friday's thing? What's I don't Friday? know. Saturday, Friday. Oh, I'll, oh, I'll, I'll tell, tell me. I'll camera. tell you yeah, afterwards. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to the club, y'all. Let's just say that. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Um, but uh, yeah, I want to see David Griffin again. That's literally yeah. your thought was my thought. Yeah. I was like, I want to hang out with David Griffin. David that's Griffin, like man. that's my goal, man. Every every time we. Uh, we have like something like Comic Con or something. Yeah, we're like, come on, we, we hang out with like cops here and all these guys all the time. But David Griffin, yeah. you got to hang out with with classy people sometimes. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. You remember when we were doing the first year? I, well, first year I was doing it. The second year you did Comic Con. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we we're doing a TV coverage, and you were like with Michael Medina or whatever. And, and we, David yeah. Griffin. Yeah, yeah. 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 We, uh, we and like, you were like carrying that camera bag that we have right over there. <laughs> yeah, literally, yeah, that's the like camera that we're recording bag, now. Fifty pounds of a camera bag. <laughs> Uh, those guys were clutch. Oh, Shout out man. to David Griffin Amazing. and Michael Medina, man. Yeah, clutch, and you too, obviously. But yeah, man. Shout that's... out to you, bro. That was a lot of good coverage. Yeah, dude, that, that was like <laughs> you did like forty videos. I didn't even like know that. what I was yeah. doing. I, I thought I thought I was like gonna do what you were doing and just shoot him. But then mm-hmm. I was like, I guess I'm hosting it. Cool, I'm hosting it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that was that fun, was, man. Was a fun time. Fun time. Shout out to San Diego Comic Con. Hopefully, we'll go back eventually. <laughs> um. Neil Varmer says, because the internet, exclamation point. Hey. Hey, man. Because the internet. Um, D. Joseph says, this and Top 10 is my all-time favorite podcast. Whoa. I'm in Africa studying safari guiding and only have enough Wi-Fi to, do, to download podcasts. Dude, that's my favorite comment. <laughs> that's amazing. That's an amazing comment. Hey, Top 10 is like my, probably one of my favorite podcasts. So like me, us being in the ranks of that is amazing. Uh, hopefully the rest of the fans will catch on one of these days. Hey man, shout out to you, commenter from the homeland, Africa, hey. the safari hey. as well. Appreciate that. Hey, uh, shout out to. Never mind. I'm. I was gonna say something so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> uh, never mind. <laughs> um, Brian Souter says Lordy Miller followed by Ron Howard is a great idea. Well, we're doing it. Oh, yeah. Um, he also says the cape wasn't that bad. I mean, <laughs> it was the best we had back then. Though. Uh, it was the best we had. Back I might have had two good episodes. Um, <laughs> Guy Cole was upset 
at us. Um, I think it was because of mainly you, because you said the DC <laughs> fans. Dude, I, I, I want to say this right now. I'm a DC fan. Like, I want to make that clear. This is what a DC fan looks like. Not those Twitter trolls you find. That the faceless morons. The, the people who are like just any negative thing you say about a DC movie. If you're a true DC fan, you want the DC movies to be great. That's what a true DC fan does. I told you last week, like... DC is my shit. Like, that's always going to be my thing. And I love Zack Snyder. I've talked about Zack Snyder repeatedly and about how I didn't like Justice League because they undercut Zack Snyder. It's the, it's like, that's the most DC fanboy thing anyone can say. And yet people still come at me. <laughs> yeah, bro. They, come they call at me you a hater. And I'm like, fucking Mother's Day. On my I, Mother's Day. Enough, but, enough, enough of this, people. If you fucking <laughs> claim to be a DCEU fan... And 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 you get mad over uh, oh a couple of people were talking bad about your favorite movies ah shut the fuck up shut the fuck up suck my right nut for all I care excuse the language for all the children listening at home but I'm sick and tired of these DC fans uh, crawling through our, through 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 our twitters mainly me I mean Ace you've been getting a little bit of it particularly this I, weekend I love DC uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I didn't yeah. even do yeah. I mean at least you you I shit on it you shit on it I didn't even shit on, shit on it. <laughs> uh, but yeah no uh, for the real DC fans out there like Ace and like I'm sure many of the reasonable people who yeah. like DC movies. DC comic books. There's some y'all. good DC movies. I mean, There's no, some bad DC movies. I probably read more DC comic books than like anything Me else. Too. I say The Dark Knight's probably like better than anything Marvel's I've, done. I, you know? I, like, like the most comic books I've ever read are just Batman comics. I've read dozens and dozens of Batman comics. I, I don't know. I, I love DC. Teen Titans. It's like, like my favorite show. Come on, man. Up. All, all I'm saying, guys, is let's be civil. Let's be polite. Yes. Let's enjoy uh, movies together. Let's be peaceful. And let's be human beings. How about that? Or get cooked on Twitter by your boy. <laughs> that will do that. Or get uh, roasted on Twitter by RB3. Uh, with that, let's talk about <laughs> Phil Lord and Chris Miller. And the crazy thing about this is, speaking of being civil, and speaking of being... <laughs> speaking of DC, by the way. Because... Speaking of... Oh, yeah, DC. That's yeah. right. But um, I am going to talk specifically. I wanted to do this. I told RB3 beforehand. I'll make it short because people have literally beaten this dead horse well not literally but they've beaten this dead horse of talking about the firing of lord and miller off the lucasfilm but i'm a i I sometimes watch collider i sometimes but dude that collider episode kind of tripped me out and i was i was literally like all of them were like well i guess kathleen was right what do you think lucasfilm never is wrong (laughs) how about you mark never wrong lucasfilm how about you john never wrong lucasfilm and i was like Mm, mm, like I was jumping out of my chair. I was like, no, 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 no. And the only one, and I'm going to give her a shout out right now, Clark Wolf. Shout out to Clark Wolf. She was the only one who was like, you fired directors three weeks before the production was done. You interviewed these guys. You've seen their movies. You know their comedy directors. You know this is their structure and this is how they shoot movies. And you still don't want to take the fall? Mm, I'm sorry, man, but I'm Team Lord and Miller. I'm sorry. I am, first of all, because of their track record. Because everything they've done and everything they've created is, say what you will about how silly and ridiculous it is, it's gold. It's funny. It makes money. And it's dope. People enjoy it. General movie going audiences enjoy it. Movie fans enjoy it. Cinephiles enjoy it. It's actually good comedy directing and my thing is no one cares specifically enough who gives a crap about a Han Solo movie even Star Wars fans were saying which I am I'm a massive Star Wars fan were saying Han Solo movie as soon as they said Phil Lord and Chris Miller I was like oh okay I get it you're making a one-off movie and you're taking advantage of tone with the with the trilogy movie you can't play around with tone because it's a Star Wars trilogy movie you have to keep it within the originals, the prequels, and the new trilogy. But if it's a spin-off movie, and if it's a Han Solo movie, it's going to be a throwaway movie. Why not make a silly comedy? Why not make some improv fun stuff? Why not make it like that? So I was on board because of Lord and Miller. As soon as they fired Lord and Miller, and the reason they gave, I was very much off board. I'm still going to watch the movie. I'm crossing my fingers. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm a fan of Phoebe Larkin. I don't know. I forget her name. Phoebe Larkin. And I obviously love Donald Glover. So 
I'm going because of them. And I'm also a massive Star Wars fan, so I want to see this movie. But I am, the more I, I read up on Phil Lord and Chris Miller, the more I see, I saw their BAFTA uh, discussion, and I see how they do their writing process and the way they interpret scripts. For me, I just, I feel like what we're going to get, and we haven't seen the movie, we can talk about reactions, because reactions weren't necessarily all that positive either. But when, once we see the movie, I'm still kind of convinced, and obviously we're going to discuss it once we do it, that what we could have gotten still would have been better. I'm convinced. Whether, whether it's what Lawrence Kasdan wanted or not is another thing, but I think it would have been a better movie. Thor Ragnarok is a perfect example. Improv works. Comedy works, guys. Let people be funny. It doesn't have to be what's on script all the time. It's okay to go off script. We've had great movies that prove this. And that's the end of my rant. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be 45 minutes, and I don't want to do that. Wow. So I don't know if you have Speaking any thoughts. Deep. Well, first of all, let me say something. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, I'm a big fan of these directors. I'm a big fan of Star Wars. I just want to put this disclaimer out there before I start. Lucasfilm, still looking for that internship. I'm still looking for the bag. I was going to say, man. <laughs> Ignore this gold chain around my neck. I'm broke. This is fake. I could bite right into it. Give me an internship, y'all. Need some money. Anyway, yeah. Uh, Han Solo and uh, Phil Lord and Chris. Here's my thing, man. Of course, like, the whole the whole situation, you, you really could have cleared this up with a little, like, pre-production, I guess, plan. But I guess, you know, when you're shooting, things go differently according to, to plans and when you originally started. Um, and egos come into power and all that stuff. It's all understandable. Um I think it's really interesting. We read up on a lot of these reports. And I, um, I, just to clear this, I've read up on all of them. Yeah. And, and some of them kind of got me upset because some of them throw Lord and Miller under the bus for the dumbest reasons. Well, see, here's my thing, too. I think that uh, when we, when those initial reports were coming out, all of them were super negative towards Lord and Miller. Mm-hmm. Hollywood Reporter had this whole piece of why they were fired all stuff. To me, what that says to me personally is that the Disney PR people were like, peddling this kind of information you know whereas like we never really heard officially from uh phil lord and chris miller's side and of course they're only going to speak positively about the experience because a they have executive producer credit they don't want to fuck up their bag or their and, money and b and they b, want they more want, jobs in hollywood they want more jobs yeah and c is probably also too the nda situation right nda sure. is all up and down the board but um so when all this negative press was coming out the first thing i thought was okay this is clearly disney peddling their power and 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 putting a little influence out and the more and more we start reading about these reports and hearing these things i mean you know i don't know to me it's like you you could clearly almost see like a pattern to like a lot of what happens with these directors on these projects with uh with rogue one um kathleen kennedy obviously had a vision the director had a vision their visions just didn't collide and then like they had to bring in somebody else to finish it same thing with solo um, same thing with episode nine. Of course, uh, they got rid of Colin Trevorrow and they brought back J.J. Abrams. And you know, there's really only like, you know, one cons- you know consecutive <laughs> one one pattern that's like consecutive in all this. And I'm not gonna throw like Kathleen Kennedy under the bus because she's uh, obviously a genius. She's been in this business for a long time. Uh, she started off as a PA for uh, Steven Spielberg on um, on um, Raiders of the Lost Ark, if I'm not mistaken. So I have nothing but respect for. Her. I don't know if the team that's around the Lucasfilm brand right now fully understands like the way to engage this material because all it was before was just George Lucas before this. It was just George Lucas. Now there's a lot of money involved, there's a lot of investments, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of bigger plays and issues and markets that they're trying to appeal to, trying to trying to go out. So it's much more of a corporate thing I feel like than it was uh, say like the original inception of Star Wars and even the prequels are kind of just like George Lucas paying for it all himself and just doing it you know um, so it's definitely it has more of a feel and they're trying to go for something safer but then even when they do go for something a little more different like with The Last Jedi um, people are going to be divided too and I was divided on it but I wasn't divided on it because it's different I was divided on it because of the filmmaking, you know, and I think that's the most important thing. I think the filmmaking from start to finish has to be uh, locked in and key and whatever story you want to tell from that point is going to work out. So, yeah, it's it's much more of a of a product than anything else. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, that that's why when 
when people were saying on episode uh, seven, when episode seven was coming out, yeah. and I was one one of the people saying it, it's like, wouldn't it be cool if Ray turned evil? Yeah. And I literally said, Ray is a Disney princess. Yeah. Ray is officially a Disney princess. Mm. You can literally take a picture with Ray at Disneyland right now. Mm. That's not a joke. So no, <laughs> she's not going to turn evil for many reasons because you're losing your your commodity, you're losing your product. But that's that's my that's kind of my issue is like I kind of like I don't like every decision that's happening with the new trilogy. I've made that very clear, but I like the central decisions that's happening with the new trilogy, but they're still playing it sort of safe. My 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 counter to that would be why not take advantage of one-off movies? The whole point of doing these anthology movies, these Star Wars story, whatever it's going to be, the whole point of it was to dive into different tones and themes and styles and types and genres of movies. Well, I mean, I think they were going for that approach initially when they got the Rogue One to be a war film kind of deal. And I thought Solo was going to be the comedy. And then they originally, you remember, they announced Boba Fett before and then that was going to be uh, uh, Josh Trank. And they know, mixed the, that. They mixed that. But, that's you know, another that's director. That's another one with uh, <laughs> yeah, problems. Ka- Kathleen <laughs> Kennedy out here with the freaking, <laughs> freaking AK, bro. Just <laughs> shooting up directors, bro. Just I, knocking them yeah, out, I bro. I gotta do that meme. Of, just uh, like, uh, Donald, Donald Glover. Uh, yeah, movie. with all the directors. <laughs> but, but my thing is like, you're right, that was supposed to be the thing. But and, have and, you, you realized that once they then once they're on set or once they see a cut of it, they're like, mm, never mind. Like, yeah, it's like- you got to trust the process. You got to trust the process. I think. And then, you know, and, you know, and of course, that's not to say maybe Lord and Miller may have not had the best time. On that's set, a that's you know? a huge possibility. All I'm bringing to the table as a as a like a front to my argument mm-hmm. is three weeks left in production and they're filmography which we're uh, gonna jump into right now which is in my opinion just bowling pin strikes every time just right. home runs every cloudy with a chance of meatballs 21 jump street brooklyn 99 22 jump street and and uh lego, lego movie. movie yeah like every single one like name one that's like oh that shit was whack like you see what i'm saying like i'm convinced that lord and miller's version of the solo movie would have been maybe wackier, maybe sillier, but significantly better than what we're going to get. And this is me jumping the gun, and I understand that, and I understand that's like a you know counter to my argument. But I, I just personally feel this way, and I really do feel like when you're a producer for a film, and and, and I, I, I'm going to, as much as I want to say Kathleen Kennedy, Kathleen Kennedy, Kathleen Kennedy, I'm going to do something even more controversial and say Lawrence Kasdan. I think this is more of a Lawrence Kasdan thing. I really do, because if you read reports and if you see, um, I really highly recommend the Lord and Miller BAFTA uh, master class that they do. It's like about an hour long. They do a Q&A, but they give a master class on screenwriting and how their version of screenwriting is very different than what most people do. But when they talk about, they actually mention Lawrence Kasdan and they say, yeah, this is not what he does. But they're very much on board with making movies and throwing in stuff that's not necessarily in the script and and even allowing stuff even at even at post even during post to change things up and make a better movie and they said in their in their uh interview they said that right now with the problem they're running into with star wars is that everyone at the studio doesn't want to take risks and they're very much want to play it safe and he they said this while they were working on it and i was like yo this is kind of crazy and they said that they're just content with what they have instead of spicing things up and, and trying to change things up a little bit when it comes to a Star Wars movie. And Lawrence Kasdan and them butt, butted heads all throughout production. And then that's what happened. Lawrence was like the one calling up Kathleen and being like, yo, these guys are listening to me. They want to change up the script. They're doing improv stuff. And my thing is like, I get it. Lawrence Kasdan is going to go down in history as one of the greatest screenwriters we have. I understand that. But at the same time, I... Like you said initially, it, this suddenly becomes, well, yo, that's Lawrence Kasdan, though. You know, you can't say shit. It's like, bro, yeah. I don't care. Yeah. I don't care who you are. Like, you see what I'm saying? But that's the problem with Hollywood, because Hollywood is all ego. And at yeah, the so end I of the day, you know, the ego it's, problem, it's yeah. never going to be like, 
you know, it's we're all filmmakers making a movie. It's like, mm, no, that's Lawrence Kasdan. So what he say goes. And if you're going off him, you're fired. <laughs> that's right. essentially what it is. Right. I don't know. I can go on all about it all day. I don't know if you have some closing words. I mean, nah, I mean, again, Lucasfilm don't take anything I said here seriously. Um, <laughs> I, I, I honestly, I again, <laughs> I always have to make disclaimers, but <laughs> I, I, there's very few people who are bigger Star Wars fans than me. Let's just say that. Yeah. Um, I've been on freaking Ken's podcast talking about how massive of a Star Wars fan I am. And if yeah. I can keep up with Ken... That I can keep up with anyway. <laughs> right, right, right. And I think I so. Think, I'm a massive Star Wars fan. So hey, and the, I'm excited for the, like the rest of what. They Me got. too. I, I, mean, I, I, uh, I told you the central stuff of what's going on. I kind of like the new trilogy. I like Kylo Ren. I like Ray. I like what they're doing. Um, mm, I do. I, I like. I like where they were headed. I think. I after still the think first they're. One. I, I don't like. I don't think. I don't know. I don't know where I the like, story's gonna. I, I, I have a feeling where the story's going, and I like where I think it's going. Really? Okay. I don't if J.J. Any... Abrams switches it up like everyone is saying, then then I won't like it. Let's just say that. Well, I don't know. I don't know how he plans on switching it. I mean, I don't know. To me, I don't. To me, that was kind of the thing of Last Jedi. Like you could have literally ended the movie. You could have literally ended the trilogy like right there, and it could have that could have been a whole story arc for both of them. I feel like almost sure. I don't know though. I'm hoping. I'm hoping it ends up good. And of course, they uh, got the Game of Thrones people to do something, right? Yeah. Ryan Johnson has a trilogy. Yeah. John Favreau has a TV show. We get some black people in there, people. So yeah. Some people of color, some women. <laughs> you see the Directors. SNL Donald Glover pe- black people in space? <laughs> no, oh, bro, you gotta see that, bro. Yeah, yeah, you gotta see that. Oh man, uh, they should have got Donald Glover to finish this movie solo. There you go. Yeah. Um, let's jump into. Their first, well, uh, that's, you know, they started out in TV. Phil Lord and Chris Miller started out in TV. They did a, MT, uh, I think it was MTV. Uh, Clone High. I Clone remember High. this show. It was MTV, right? I, I think it was either MTV or um, Cartoon Network. So Clone like High was about um, historical figures, clones of historical figures going to high school together. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the crazy, insane stuff that happens. Super wacky. Super, Super wacky, wacky. But that's very Lord and Miller. It's yeah. very wacky. But from there... They wanted to, when they jumped into film, they wanted to do an animated movie. They were both considered animation experts because that's kind of what they did in college. They met in college. um, And they started out with Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs Mm -hmm. based on... The children's story, right? Based on the children's book, correct. Right. Um, And then apparently when they did Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, this is some inside info that they give on the BAFTA masterclass that I recommended... They they were initially like just jerked around by the studio. Mm. The studio was was so like fed up with what they were doing. They were changing so many stuff that eventually I think they were like fired initially and they were hired back on. Yeah, I think that's really? what they said. Wow. Yeah, like it was crazy. And that at the end of the day, they were going to shut down the project, mm. but they spent too much money already. <laughs> so their plan was, and this is straight from Phil Lord and Chris Miller, their plan was to um let the project finish and then once it fails to just bury Lord and Miller. They wow. that, like that's what the studio wanted to do. And then that didn't happen because it turned out hit. to be a pretty good movie. Yeah. So I want to hear your thoughts on Cut It with a Chance of Me. You see, okay, this was the most recent one I rewatched actually, uh, for the whole rewatch of these movies. Um I remember watching this movie as a kid and like distinctly not liking it. I remember that. Uh how old were you? I was like was it nine years ago? Nine years ago? I was like 12, 11, something like that. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> I remember seeing this, and I remember this was before the Avatar hype. So then mm-hmm. this was like, oh, it's a new 3D movie, and it's going to be food in 3D. <laughs> and like, and I, I, you know, I think that's what they were initially going for, like in the trailers and stuff to sell kids on this. Um, but then like you go into it, and it's like, yeah, it's food falling out of sky and there's actual people talking. So like I don't know. For me, as like a little kid, I was able to register like real quick like, the Pixar movies are the one for the stories and then like everything else. And especially this was Sony animations. This was one of their first big sure. projects in general, which I'm sure is why Phil, Phil Lord and Chris Miller were nervous about that going uh, or, or have being jerked around by the studio. Um, so this is one of their first bigger projects. We're watching it now though. I love this movie, man. Yeah. This is a great, great, great animated movie. And then like, 
I don't know, man. All the stuff with uh, or Mr. T when he's like when he's a police officer that kills me. Um, the the uh, the character of Sam uh, played by Anna Faris, like the the, the 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 journalist, the weather reporter, weather reporter, yeah. yeah. Um, having to like hide her smart or smarts to like <laughs> trying to appeal to, you know, and then really, mainstream audience, main, and then really, I mean, honestly, bro, like going to college with like a lot of you know journalism majors. USC is one of the biggest like journalism schools, you know, for broadcast journalism, whatever. And then you meet a lot of people who are super airheads, bro, super airheads. And then, but then, <laughs> and, but then you meet a good amount of people who are like actually really smart, but then they do put on the airhead approach and like. We're watching this movie now. I was like, "Oh, okay, they're totally hitting that. Like, they're yeah. totally hitting that." And I, I really appreciate that. Um, I don't know. I just love this movie, man. Yeah, this it's it's funny because I, I think this this podcast is going to be a fun one because we're mainly going to talk about um, central themes of the movie is obviously um, father and son, and and the father feeling like he can't relate to his son. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a big right. one too. Right. But he he also feels like maybe it's time for him to grow up. Mm-hmm. And to maybe take a real job and instead of kind of dreaming a little too big. Right. Which is different from his mother who he lost when he was younger who believed that, you know, dream as big as you want because you were gifted mm-hmm. initially. So that's the central theme. But again, what makes this movie great at the end of the day and what makes Phil Lord and Chris Miller great is that they're just really good at making funny movies. This yeah. is a genuinely funny movie. There's a lot of little jabs they take that you can kind of... I love... The, they Every time they jump to London and to UK, <laughs> yeah. they, they do like a little jab of how they're like... I love the ending, especially the ending is what they, what they do. <laughs> where like, everyone embraced it. Ice cream Paris. <laughs> Ice cream Egypt. And then they sh- jump to UK. No change. <laughs> it's oh, man, too. It's, it's too fun for them. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want no fun. But um, that's funny. And also the ending where they're like, suddenly all these giant storms are attacking all the major cities, starting with New York. And New York's yeah. like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like why us? <laughs> kind of like as a, as a every as a disaster, disaster movie disaster movies, yeah. is always New York. Yeah. And then I love the. Um, during like the first act of the movie, where the pan up camera shot. Oh yeah, when everyone everyone is going, up. Yeah, dun-na, yeah. Dun-na. even like the monkey going, dun-na. yeah, <laughs> they oh, killed man. me, dude. It's like t- if you're a movie fan, you would a- actually understand that stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's very, it's very much like touching on on the, the tropes of traditional stuff. Um, I love the themes, like you mentioned, the theme of of like father and son. I also think it, it concerns itself a lot with like people who are like outside of the social norm. And I think that's really what what this movie like comes down to. I, I think what not this movie. I think what uh, Phil Lord and Chris Miller's filmography coming down to, like people who are like outside of the traditional norms of like where they're supposed to conform to um, and want to be different and want to break out, but like society is like trying to hold hold them down. Uh, I think that's really, really important, uh, you know, thing to like encourage kids to like break out of. It's uh, always interesting doing a kids movie, right? Because w- when you want to do a kids movie, you want to make it simple. Because mm-hmm. if you're too complex, then you're going to neglect your majority of your majority of your audience. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you you want to make it interesting and funny for adults and for kids. But at the same time, you're right. You want to make a message that parents can be like, well, that's a good message. Like mm-hmm. it's a good message for kids, and that's a it's a good one, and it has a great ending too, with the with the translator going on the dad, and he's like, yeah, he's like actually, you know, pouring his heart out, saying how much he loves his son and all that. Right. I think that's a great heartfelt ending right. after so much ridiculousness that went down of like flying into a giant meatball and like, yeah, 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 like yeah. Freaking Manny is like flying. Manny, is a little, <laughs> Manny, little, Manny's hilarious. Little yeah. Guatemalan doctor <laughs> and pilot and pilot. Um, I, um, I love, I love. And he's, I'm from Guatemala. Of course, I'm a doctor. And he just like <laughs> starts coming out. Yeah. I came here for a better life. How do you think that's going? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Hey, I love man. it. But uh, um, and that's you know that's another thing that they do a lot too is like subverting the expectations sure, of like characters. Sure. Like, um, yeah. I also love the the little monkey character. I, th- I think his name is Steve. Uh, Steve. I can't remember. Yeah. But, but dude, yeah. that scene when he's like. When the gummy bears are attacking, oh, attacking the ship, the plane, yeah. oh my <laughs> god, dude! And he, when he sees it, he just sees la 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 la. The gummy bears are dancing for him, and he's like, "Yes, gummy bears!" <laughs> and then he starts like attacking them and doing like he pulls the heart out. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like stuff like that is just really, really funny to me. 
Um, <laughs> and I, I think this movie for like a fun, cute, small, because it's, it's, it's a genuinely short mu- movie as most uh, animated movies are. Yeah. It's a really fun movie that's a great starting point for animation directors. Right, right, right. And, you know, in this, one of the more, I think, you know, Phil Lord and Chris Miller don't get credit for being, like, some more influential directors working because this movie really did influence a, kind of a different wave of of animated uh, film. You know, it, like I said, kind of re, re-upped the Sony animations, uh, you know, stuff where then they did Smurfs after this and a bunch of other stuff. Um, it kind of brought that, like, that wacky kind of colorful kind of comedy um, you know, it kind of into the mainstream almost, and 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 you know, we saw other films like Rio kind of embrace that as well. Um, a lot of other like outside of the Pixar or Disney realm had kind of embraced. Hell, even even somewhat with Disney with Wreck It Ralph kind of takes a lot of the same kind of like the food. You know, the, the I mean, I guess food is the really only connecting factor, but like how the kind of tone and the, and the, and the, and the, and the uh, extreme like animation that they they kind of go for here. Um, and, and again, you know, this is, this is a movie that I think definitely, uh, you know, addresses the societal norms and breaking out of it as well as like how things that were from the past are no longer cool anymore. Right. Like we see like the baby Brett character who was like, the baby, the giant, the baby in the, in the, in the original sardines commercial. Now he's like this grown up, like loser. (laughs) And, 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 and like he, he's still holding on to the past because he thinks he, that's like cool. Um, but obviously people are over sardines in this town and stuff too. So. Yeah, played by Andy Samberg. Right, right Andy Samberg. Yeah, this cla- this whole the whole cast, the main the main Bill character Hader, is right? Bill Hader. Yeah. Um, Anna Ferris, Benjamin Brad played Manny. That's right. Um, and like I said, Mr. T. Dude, I'm telling you that he has so many funny lines in this in, the, <laughs> in this movie. Uh, I can't remember, just the whole scene when he was like first being introduced. He was like dancing around, <laughs> dancing around a uh, uh, homie man. There's just so many funny, mo- so many funny moments in this movie. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah and it's a great bit with his son too that he's just wanting to to help yeah. out his son because again it goes back to the theme of father son relationship because yeah. that's that's if you're gonna focus on something you you want to make it something that everyone can understand mm-hmm. and when you when you hear them talk about the movie they they said that the, they chose that and they wanted to make it a father-son relationship because it was simple and because everyone can understand that and everyone can come uh, together on that idea, right. essentially, is what it is. Right, right, right. Um, so I, I think that's a great start for them and it eventually jumped off their career to make um, animated movies. That's essentially what they were known for. So it's, yeah. a, it's a great starting point. Also, shout out to Chris McKay because Chris McKay was a head animation director on this head animation... Something head animation, head of animation, and then for, uh, for this movie, uh, and then he ended up directing Lego Batman, too, correct? Right? And then, yeah, so so that that's a yeah. you are capable as a filmmaker to jump off or even start off from animation and jump off to live action. It's yeah. it's a it's a it's it's uh, he was approached for a li- for the uh, live action uh, Nightwing, Nightwing too, correct? Right? Yeah. That he's still he's still attached to do it. Yeah. I mean, oh, we don't know about DC movies. I mean, he, he <laughs> tweeted about it like three days ago. Oh, really? So, yeah. Okay, all right. Still, um, still hope. but uh, they, apparently there was rumors of Zac Efron. So what? As no way. Everyone is like, I, I, I don't like fan casting. I hate it. Yeah. But a lot of people are fan casting. Um, damn it! I'm gonna forget his name. Dylan Campbell? Not Dylan Campbell. Which one? Um, the kid from. Um, What's that? Uh, the kid from the the freaking Maze Runner. What's his name? Oh, oh, uh, Dylan, Dylan O'Brien. O'Brien. Yeah, Dylan O'Brien. People keep saying him, mm. and I, every time I'm like, I hate fan casting, but I'm like, yo, that's kind of good. Dylan yeah. O'Brien would be that, kind of that's, that's, that's kind of dope. That's, that's a dope ten casting. Ten times better than Zac Efron. Yeah, that's that's actually good. At, um, I would love to casting. see Zac Efron as a uh, as a uh, Captain Cap or, or Shazam. Shazam. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. 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 But he's that, too late because it's actually yeah, late. Already, yeah, they're already yeah. filming. Yeah. <laughs> to me, it would have worked. He has that boyish charm, I think. That yeah. would have. You need somebody tougher for Nightwing, I feel like. Yeah, know? yeah. I almost, I f- almost feel like if Dan Stevens wasn't doing Legion, like, Dan Stevens. Dan Stevens can do anything, though. Yeah. Shout yeah. out to Dan Stevens. Dan Stevens is one of the most versatile actors. He's, he's awesome. I love Dan Stevens. Yeah. Um, And speaking of going to live action, they jumped into. An R-rated comedy, <laughs> so it is possible, guys. Called Twenty One Jump Street. Whoa! And Twenty One Jump Street is an awesome freaking movie. Yeah. I love this movie. It stars Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum, and this is what 
sparked Channing Tatum's career in into comedy. Yeah. Proving that he's actually a funny guy if you give him a good team around him and if you give him an opportunity to be funny. He's actually a funny guy. And Jonah Hill was coming off the super bad fame, which he was already right, known for. Right, right. But 21 Jump Street, you know what's funny, man? I, I did a movie fights like a super long time ago and I, I argued about 21 Jump Street for one, like, I forget what specific question it was, but mm. a lot of people, and I'm one of those people, and I know a lot of people are going to judge me, but I don't care. Mm. I, I didn't know this was based on a show or movie that Johnny did. I had no freaking clue. Mm. I had no idea. When, jo when I saw this in theaters and when Johnny Depp came out, and I saw it with like a bunch of young people too. I think it was like opening night. Mm -hmm. When Johnny Depp came out, everyone's like, oh cool, it's Johnny Depp. No one was no one caught the like the oh he was from the previous show. No one caught it. Yeah. No one freaking caught it. Like I didn't catch it. A lot of people around me didn't catch it. Um and everyone was talking about it afterwards. They were like, yo, that, that was funny when Johnny Depp came out. But no one like I was like, he came out because he was in the original show. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know this was based on an original show. Sorry guys. I didn't know that beforehand. Uh, afterwards, obviously, I did know that, but making a reboot of a pretty semi-popular show is is an yeah. interesting thing to jump off of. Yeah. But I think they nailed it like over and over. I think they just nailed it, well, like straight up, just like when Jonah Hill is like shooting freaking oh, the guns yeah. in the yeah, yeah. I think that's how good they nailed it. Yeah. Well, dude, I think I think they really they they perfectly landed on. Like the sweet spot of like understanding that nobody watches this show, but like still kind of having some respect for it. Um, I, I think the whole, um, and again, I think this is another theme that connects from uh, Cloudy for Chance of Meatballs to uh, the 21 and 22 Jump Street movies. It's like the whole idea of like um, something from the past being cool and then like in the present not being cool. And I feel like this is like a meta commentary on that, like where like when we see like Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum go back to high school and think they're reliving like their old lives of like what's traditionally cool and what's not cool anymore. Um, it's kind of almost like a commentary on this movie, right? Like if you watch the original show, and by the way, one of my uncles like used to watch the show all the time. So like I knew it was a show before, um, but then like I remember like being a little kid and just watching it, they used to play on like on like channel 13 or whatever uh one of the like the fox like offset networks or whatever and like they used to show reruns and it used to be the silliest most over the top like dramatic like melodrama kids like or teenage stuff like oh my god can you believe not not like that but it's like uh we, we have a new case today somebody is uh somebody has aids whoa it was like a p it was like literally like one of those like cheesy 80s like psas or whatever like but a full tv show of it bro so I'm like doing it this way is making fun of that and still doing the over the top cheesiness of like the detective, like, like going in and out and like talking to people, but still making it funny and updating it for modern times. Uh, and I think that's, I think Phil, Phil Lauren and Chris Miller are just genius for like taking that approach. Um, and again, one of the more influential uh, directors, without this, we wouldn't see like the onslaught of, 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 of R rated comedy reboots like Chips, of, of old TV shows like Chips, Baywatch. Um, there's another one that came out recently too, right? That was like another TV reboot that they kind of made into a comedy. I think uh, so, but I forget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, that's just a pattern that, that just works and just makes sense. Uh, and, you know, for a lot of other movies, it doesn't work. But because of the careful comedy hand of Lord, Phil Lord and Chris Miller, this movie comes out like excellent. Yeah, and, yeah. The, and the cast is, is, is really great too. I mean, obviously you have Channing Tatum and John, Jonah Hill, but you have Brie Larson. Yeah, like Brie Larson. Early Brie Larson. Yeah. This is early. early Larson. This is pre-Oscar Brie Larson. Yeah, and you also have um, um, what's his name? Dave Franco's in this, um, and then freaking one of the best characters in the entire two movies is Ice Cube. Ice Cube. Yeah. Ice, and he, I love his <laughs> entrance. He's like, I know what you guys are thinking. Black Captain stereotype. <laughs> it's like I don't give a shit. I work my ass off to be captain. <laughs> and he's like, embrace your stereotype like this guy. He's a good looking guy, but he's probably a dummy. <laughs> like everything was just like yeah. spot on, literally winking at the camera, yeah. telling you how they're subverting expectations. Wasn't that funny? So that's another like, that's another like they they do the stereotypes like, yeah to the t but then like subvert it to subvert some it that's yeah, exactly yeah. it yeah, yeah. where the, he's like a dummy but then he goes back to high school and he's hanging out with the nerds yeah. and he realizes like the nerds are 
actually cool and you can like yeah. learn from them and science is great and you right. can enjoy that stuff and and it's so funny too when you watch uh 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 the Clyde with a chance of meatballs and then the 21 jump where they both have the black cop that's like overly energetic and yelling and stuff. That's uh, so true. And they both have children's storylines, weirdly enough, too. We're going to get to 22 Jump Street as well. Yeah. Uh, but like this one, for this movie, I thought it was so funny that, like like you said, like the role reversal happens, like Eminem, like, or not Eminem, but like Joni Hill's wearing like the Eminem yeah. haircut in the beginning, the chain. Not so, yeah. not so Slim Shady. Yeah, not so. Yo, yeah. not so Slim Shady. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great nickname. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> and 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 again, that's like the early two thousands, like what it was to be cool. But then, like now, um, now that he when when he went, goes back to school and he's just being himself, he realized like being a nerdy, geeky kind of person is more popular now than like it probably ever has been before. Um, uh, it, that that's like I love how they make a comment. That, like this is my this is my era because I'm I'm in that little like I think they were in high school like in two thousand five. Like I was in high school in two thousand five. Mm-hmm. Um, so that era is like my era. Kind yeah. Of thing. So when they when he was talking about like. I'm in the pre the the opening era. Oh, okay, okay. With, okay, with like yeah. the old right, school, right, 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 right. So <laughs> I'm in the I'm in like I was a nerd and I was like liking liking nerdy stuff was dumb and this was stupid. Right. And then I love how they come back and they're like, "Yo, like not, liking comic books is cool." Like, yeah, yeah. it is cool. <laughs> like everyone loves it now. Back when I was in high school, it wasn't cool, man. But I love how he's like, "Yo, if someone steps on you, just punch him in the face." Yeah. And the, the, the the black guy comes up and he's like, "What? Hey, man, what you call? Why'd you call me a nerd?" And he punches him. Yeah, yeah. And then it cuts to him in the principal's office uh-huh. and it's like you punched a black little black gay kid in the face uh-huh. and it's like nah man I, I just I punched he, him and he happened yeah. to be gay <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's oh, so man. funny it's man so good. yeah um, yeah I just love that they and then uh, 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 who plays like the original was it uh, Nick, Nick Offerman Nick uh, off and yeah the, like, little part that he has in that movie man hilarious hilarious yeah because he's um, the one who who does the references right he's right, like man right. these guys are just uh, redoing the same thing again they're just rebooting this old program right, right it's called right. 21 jump street i don't know and they're like he's talking right. about it while winking at the camera right that they're some you know literally rebooting it and it's such a stupid thing that they're doing mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, obviously that he does that again in 22 jump street with like probably the best <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> like yeah, yeah talking at the audience right. and, and and um phil lord and chris miller actually talked about it in yeah. their uh in their master class yeah. they talked about how they every time they have fourth wall moments they don't want to necessarily break it but they mm-hmm. always want to be like almost not touching it and they, they they were like making a joke about it they were like we're not touching you we're not touching you to the fourth wall yeah as yeah. far as like <laughs> make it kind of make sense in the in the storyline like always make it sort of make sense in a conversation and in dialogue right. but never fully break it and like have someone like wink at the camera or something like that right right right, right but right. they always love doing that stuff and that's kind of what they're known for now after doing 21 jump street and 22 jump street mm-hmm. even lego movie they have a lot of like little fourth wall oh, definitely yeah, breaks yeah. as well but i i love this movie and i'm gonna give you a shot and i'm i'm gonna probably go back to it for every movie from now on that we talk about lord and miller favorite moment of 21 Jump Street uh, or favorite co- joke or favorite. Kind of, there's so many fun so like when they're on drugs and when they try the drugs it's funny yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. for me I love when they're like they, they do the stupidest oh yeah yeah, yeah, like, yeah. so I'm gonna beat your dick off did you say you're gonna beat my dick off I'll beat your dick off with both hands bro and, Jonah, and he's like yo that's weird man and Jonah Hill's like I think he means like he's gonna punch you in the dick and it's gonna hurt so hard that it's gonna fall off <laughs> that's funny um the freaking uh when they're the freak that's the best one when they're doing the car chase scene yeah and yeah. they keep throwing like like every like the, the scene with like the gas they hit mm-hmm. a gas gas tank mm-hmm. car yeah. and it has like the shots like dun dun yeah dun 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 dun, dun, dun like it's about to explode and right. it's like dun, and then it cuts to them Oh man, I thought that would explode. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then when it finally does, like, when the it fucking finally, chicken, it's the like, chicken. Yeah. It's like, that's what explodes. Come on, man. <laughs> like, that was funny. Yeah. That is funny because it's a shout out to action movies. Right. And right. how action movies have tropes. Right. And how they're subverting those and, and spoofing like the bad boy, like the, the bad, bad boy, boy yeah, thing, dude. Yeah. That freaking bad boys two, that freaking highway scene, yeah, is insane. Still one of the best. Like, it's still one of the craziest action scenes I've ever yeah. seen. Yeah, yeah of all legit. Time. But yeah. uh, that's funny to me. Um, there's a, so many funny moments for me, but that that's 
that's probably my favorite. Is this is the scene where they're doing that? Yeah, yeah. To me, is to me is uh, also the drug trip scene when they first have it when oh <laughs> when they're God. talking to the coach. <laughs> like, and I love how they have like part two confidence, part yeah. three uh, sleepiness, part four. Yeah, it's like, yeah. They have. I love when he's on the track. It's like go Schmidt. Go. Come on, Doug. What are you doing, Doug? No, don't. The, the baton's not your dick, bro. And he's just like commenting everything. Right, right. That's right. super funny to me. Um, yeah. yeah, this the, movie's amazing. I this love is, it. This is probably one of the top five, I say, comedies of like the 2000s era. It's like, and you know, it's funny time. when I told you this because um, jumping after this, we're jumping into 22 Jump Street now. And, and I got to tell you, man, jumping from 21 to 22, you have the expectations of doing a comedy sequel which guess what guys comedy sequels are hard to do they never work out they never work out they hardly ever do there you can literally count them on your fingers how many are good or, or better than the original or great yeah. and yet 22 jump street does that man yeah 20 that's why i told you when we were talking about the dark knight and you were talking about godfather part one and two yeah. i was like the best dual movies godfather godfather part one and two 21 and 22 jump street remember i said <laughs> yeah, that yeah 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 that's how it goes for best part one and part two it goes <laughs> godfather one and two and then 21 and 22 jump street yeah, yeah as far as best part one and best part two what do you think what do you think is better uh, uh 21 or 22 it's actually very hard but yeah. i i think Overall, it's fair to say that I think 22 is slightly better. Okay. I think 22 is slightly. Do you think 21 is better? I'm on the other end. 21? Like, it's like 51 49. It really, for me, it like, is 51 49 too. Don't get yeah. me wrong. But but literally by a hair, by yeah. like five minutes of screen time, it slightly goes to yeah. 22 Jump Street. 22, yeah. man, I love this freaking movie. Yeah. I love this movie. And what's funny is um, my brother loves this movie too. And my brother is like, him and I don't ever, don't usually have the same movie taste. Mm-hmm. But when he was like, when him and I were talking about 21 and 22 Jump Street, him and I were like quoting lines and stuff. Because mm-hmm. we both adore this movie. And this movie is great because it lets the audience know, if you're smart enough to capture it, especially with the Nick Offerman character, that yes, they're doing a sequel. Yes, it's hard to do. And, he's, and they're he's, doing the same thing over again. are doing the same yeah. thing over again, and, and, and we're going to try to make it better, and we're just repeating the same shit and expecting, you know, something different. And, mm-hmm. and it's like, we'll see how it goes, man. And it's literally like in the first 10 minutes of the movie. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. great because you're literally telling the audience, we'll see how it goes. Right. Um, but now they're in college, um, and they found out what, what's different about college as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love the, the the roommates they meet, the people they meet, right. the twins, the Lucas brothers, yeah, the Lucas brothers. Is that what yeah. they're called? They're, they're real, they're real, yeah, the, the, real, the, the real guys. The twins yeah. is so freaking funny, yeah. dude. That scene is like two minutes, but it's hysterical. Mm-hmm. It's it's super funny, and it has oh, when, they, when they're like matching this, or when they're saying the sentences, like, yeah, it's, it's like, like Jinx. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, tie. <laughs> <laughs> oh man see those guys are funny they're actually like real stand-up comedians that yeah. do their sets together and have this little animated show called uh lucas lucas brothers moving company you gotta check out that it's like it only had like a few episodes i think hilarious show though hilarious yeah yeah, yeah. But, um those guys are great and, and you're right though it's, it's it's the same thing it's literally plot point by plot point the same exact movie as before. They and just yet, flip it up a, a little bit. And yet it's hysterical. And yeah. yet they, they really do make it funny and make yeah. it interesting. I don't know. What are your general thoughts on this? Normally movie? normally I really hate movies that are like, Oh, I, I uh uh you know, oh we're 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 shitty but you know, at least we're trying or something. Like I really normally hate we're movies sh- that do that. Or like we're repeating stuff. Or we're, you mean? like we're just. Or I feel like, like we, we're we're generic. Like yeah. I hate when movies like literally come out and say we're generic or we're, we suck. Like pretty much, you know. And this movie did that, but to me it was like they actually delivered on like the, the funny parts of it. To me, the, the two movies that like actually work with that approach are this movie and Deadpool. That have like the self inferential like oh we're we're just doing the same thing like as usual but then like but then again Deadpool two we'll see Deadpool two yeah we're also gonna do a spoiler review for that next week and I'm curious how uh, that's that's gonna work out if yeah it works yeah. out if it doesn't I it hope could? you know they, they, they hopefully I mean I love uh, I love uh, Josh Brolin uh, playing Cable it's like perfect casting yeah um, but then like but back to this movie though I, I again that that whole like self inferential self 
referential. Like they did that even in, in Neighbors too. And like I really didn't like Neighbors too. But I love how they implemented it in this one because it added like a, a new level of freshness by like switching the parts of the of the characters. Like now you finally like how um, uh, like how one finally gets cool in high school and one isn't cool anymore. Uh, you see that flipped around. Like in college, <laughs> and I, I think it's almost like a meta commentary on like college to a certain extent. It's like, yeah, college is still like the held back traditional standards of what's cool and what's not cool. The football players versus, you know, the the the, the art geeks or whatever, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. I think um, going back to more about the filmmaking for Phil Lord and Chris Miller, I, what makes them great is that they are they don't they're not afraid to take risks and they talk about it a lot in the in the in the discussion they had but they say that the most important thing they have is open ideas and open ideas basically means everything and anything goes mm. just shout out something that you think is funny and let's see if it sticks and then you you go down from there and then you edit 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 until you find out what's good and what doesn't work but their their ability and their fearlessness to do things that seem a little far-fetched and make it work for example what's funny to me and this is the freaking the 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 trip scene that they have mm. when 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 freaking channing tatum is is in the freaking happy place They're like this place is awesome man right. it's like i got my lambo my <laughs> lambo and he's like man my side sucks, man. And it's like Nickelback playing right, on the background. Right, right, right. <laughs> and then it cuts back to like Channing Tatum's place. And then the song like ass and titties, yeah, ass, ass and, and titties. titties. Yeah. And he's like dancing around. Yeah. <laughs> and then freaking uh, Vietnamese Jesus is dancing with him oh, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, my place is awesome, man. And he's like, man, my place sucks. And it starts raining on him. Right. Uh, and then Nickelback gets louder. Yeah. And he's like, I'm going to fly away, man. I'm going to fly. And he keeps flying. Like that, like on script. I w- if I were a studio, ex- like a 65-year-old studio executive, I'd be like, nah, bro. Nah. <laughs> but seeing it on screen, it's hysterical. Yeah. Like That, to me, is an example of something that, whether it was their idea or not, is something that they've embraced and made it funny. Right. Do, it, do it different. Because right. we literally have that scene in the first one. Right. Now let's take it and make it funnier. Or right. make it different. Well, you know, and, and again, I think this one kind of highlights and draws out you know i think the first drug trip scene in the first one is more of just like a fun comedy moment sure i think this one it kind of really does draw like the inner psyches of the characters like in that moment too right like like jonah hill's uh what's his character's name in in these movies uh it's not schmidt schmidt is schmidt and doug yeah yeah i guess they're undercover names um well their undercover names are doug and brad doug and brad yeah brad is it but i know schmidt schmidt is isn't schmidt jonah hill I'm going to find this guy. Okay, we're going to figure this out. Yeah. Because anyway. this is messed up. Yeah, we fucked up. Um, but uh, <laughs> pretty sure he's, he's Doug, though. Is he Doug? Uh, Schmidt and Jenko. Jenko. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So D- Doug way. is is Doug and Brad are their cover First names. First names. So. Okay. Yep. Okay, what are, oh, yeah, okay. Cover okay. names. Cover names. Okay, there we go. Um, Schmidt is, Chan- is Jonah Hill. Hill. Oh, yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay, so you're right. Um... What? What Our you? iTunes listeners are like, I'm oh, done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> putting their their headphones. Oh, they, they, they've been checked out. Yeah, sorry, y'all. <laughs> hey, at least we already got the download. Am I right? Uh, <laughs> no. Okay, so let me. Uh, 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 what were we talking about? You're talking about the inner psyche. Oh, of the right. The, <laughs> the inner psyche of the characters. I think that that really highlights like where they are in that in that in that point in the movie, sure. right? Like. And I think that's almost, you know, I mean, you know, kind of, you know, what this is the meaning of, you know, for a lot of like drug trip. You know, for a lot of like real life drug trips, that really is like the psychological effect of like a lot of drugs, right? They, That's a they good kind point. of put you into the internal psyche of like if the you're super like if you're super depressed, you're gonna be you're gonna get you're worse. gonna get worse, and if yeah. you're super happy, you're only gonna feel worse. Uh, and a lot of times, you know, they use drugs like therapy to like kind of you know, or a lot you know, a lot of old medicine was like using drugs to for you know, where therapists could kind of explore what. You know, in the psyche. And, you know, a lot of people say, like, taking, like, mushrooms or whatever is, like, a therapeutic experience because it is kind of like those moments, too, where you do discover what's going on inside of you. Um, so, I don't know, just pulling that off. Yeah, you know, that's yeah. that's that's very interesting. Yeah, I, I, I feel like this movie has so many moments that really deliver on making... It's you know what I what I admire the most is is knowing that your audience is smart enough to capture certain things. Right. I guess that's what I'm saying. Right. Because I hate 
I, I'm, I'm not the biggest comedy fan because I feel like comedies nowadays and comedies for a long time, and I'm obviously generalizing it, but I'm saying like they're sometimes they play up the dumbness of everything, right? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and there's nothing wrong with being dumb, but I feel like knowing what your audience is expecting and subverting that expectation is much funnier if you know how to do it and if you make it in a funny comedic way. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what they're so good at doing. Um, in their discussion as well, Lordy Miller talked about how they're not afraid to hear other people's opinions on what they think is funny. And they're not necessarily, they said that the best advice they can give is don't be so attached to a joke. Mm -hmm. Because as much as you feel like it's funny that you can continue to make something funnier. Or if you have someone edit something else or give you an opinion on it, don't be so defensive about it. Because that's coming from a place um, of an audience member. And you want to know what the audience thinks of. So mm -hmm. they, they have a mentality of... of doing stuff that they feel is funny and hearing different people's opinions on going off script which it's hard for a lot of filmmakers it's hard for a lot of filmmakers and then which goes back to my you know first comment about the lucasfilm stuff but it's improvising it's literally what it is it's it's having the ability to read a script and on the day of the set be like why don't you try this why don't you do that or what would you say in this moment or what like that's improv that's improv comedy right, right. and 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 it's having the you know confidence in yourself to go off script right. and and having a screenwriter that won't take that personally <laughs> right, right, right. which didn't work out for han solo yeah, <laughs> but i think improv comedy and, and and stuff that's improvised and stuff that's funny and stuff that's spur of the moment again i mentioned thor ragnarok works yeah. it works it, it 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 has the ability to do something different and that's even like lego movie or clutter with a chance of meatballs they improv a lot in in animation a lot of people don't know that but a lot of that is improv yeah. um and they animate like animate and they animate over it yeah, yeah. Um, um by the way speaking of improv let me cut you off are you done right. no yeah all right i was gonna say like uh i yeah I've, I've recently had some experience like working in like on an improv are you doing improv classes or between uh, oh no not doing oh. for like acting i actually just shot a uh uh why well, i, I been shot at. I, I shot and directed this uh, 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 short film that was like completely improv. It's called uh, Please Press Fives. It takes place like on an elevator. In fact, I'm going to put it on my YouTube channel this Friday. So, by the way, shameless plug, y'all. Check out my YouTube channel. I don't know if you if you care about no, me. No, man. It's, it's not shameless <laughs> at all, man. <laughs> Check out my YouTube channel, people. Every every Friday it's I've been dropping. It's a great show. Shameless is a great show, Shameless guys. is a great show. <laughs> um, that, unfortunately, shameless is not my YouTube channel. But every Friday, I've been putting out like short films every, you know, every, every Friday. So like this Friday is gonna be this, this like this thing I'm talking about here. It's all improv. We just went to an elevator for like two hours and just shot it, and uh, it's really funny. So check that out on my YouTube channel, Robert Butler the Third on YouTube. There you go. Yeah. Back uh, to twenty two. Back, back to twenty two Jump Street. Sorry, Phil Lord and Chris Miller, if you're hearing this. Well, the reason why I bring that up too is because <laughs> I feel like this is what sets them apart. I feel like a lot of comedy nowadays is set on what they want as yeah. far as a joke, and a, a lot of it is pride. Yeah. Like it's crazy how that happens but we assume as fans of movies and we assume as fans of filmmakers that dramas and story beats and moments and you know touching intellectual moments in film and oscar winning films are what people gravitate towards and and have like very significant pride in as a screenwriter when in reality co comedic directors and comedic writers are very precious <laughs> yeah. about their jokes yeah. to the point where like, mm -mm, you're not cutting that out. You're not doing this or you're not going to go away from this that I wrote or right. that I said or that the idea that I came up with. It's, right. it's one of the most ego driven types and genres of movies. And the fact that Phil Lord and Chris Miller are able to kind of twist that and say, they literally say this, that they're, the, the the thing that sets them apart, the thing that they recommend the most as a screenwriter is to have the ability to adapt on set, in post, on the day, or even in edit to take other people's opinions and to make something better, make it funnier. How do we make this funnier is, is the thing that we're saying. Right, right. Yeah, yeah and, and I think that's... Uh... Again, you you see it through like the way uh, the the some of it's edited through the animation of, of some of it. Um, again, going back to the drop trick scene, that's definitely you could tell a lot of that might have been added in and post or whatever. Um, and I just I just love like 
the the spice that they add to like the 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 scenes with the timing too and i think that the 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 editing kind of almost like improv editing in a way too right of like how um each each beat kind of hits like a specific like kind of tick you know kind of like for me the funniest scene uh well one of the funnier scenes i was gonna, i was just about to ask you what's your well, favorite have, funny scene well I have, I have one scene in particular that's by far the, the best but then like kind of a scene leading up to that is when janko was talking to ice cube uh, or, or I guess the scene after is like Janko talking to, to to the Ice Cube character about uh, Jonah Hill, <laughs> and then like the little timer. Oh uh, my god! The timer sound effect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh shit! Oh shit! Like, yeah, like as yeah. soon as he starts doing the yo shit, yeah. and he starts banging the table. Yeah. I oh my! I lost it, dude. Yeah. I lost it. I was yeah. laughing so hard. It is so good. And again, that's the. Like that, if that scene was like too long or too short, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have like worked. The, it wouldn't have been as funny. But like the scene with the uh, Ice Cube at the buffet. Too. Yeah, that's my favorite. That's, that's my the favorite scene. Yeah, of the, of the entire. I that to me is probably the hardest I've ever laughed in the theater. Like ever. Like when that reveal starts happening, all the when way. He grabs the leg of the turkey. Yeah. And starts slamming the turkey. Give me that motherfucking leg. <laughs> I'm breaking the. Uh, I just love Jonah Hill's like. Uh, well, he's like, uh, can a black man get some water? It's like Jonah Hill's like. Give some water he's a black man he's had a hard time <laughs> i remember that that's great dude Just, come on man he's black come on help him out come on he's had a hard life man <laughs> queen latifah did the little shit out compton joke oh in there too. my god dude. uh the whole thing was um too good. my favorite moment and and the ones that that always gets me, well, one of my favorite moments in this movie because i i would say the trip is probably my favorite that's the funniest to mm. me i laugh every time but one of my favorites and one that I always like imitate and I used to make my friends laugh by doing it because I, I know this movie almost by heart, not quite by heart. Um, but it's the scene where they're infiltrating the Mexican drug lords. And oh, they're like, yeah, they tell me that have it look like a Mexican Wolverine, man. And he's like doing that whole thing. <laughs> yeah. He's like, what, why don't you tell him, man? Why don't you tell him? Have he's like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's. My, my name is Jeff. <laughs> he yeah, says yeah, that my yeah, name yeah. is Jeff. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, oh, why don't you go into tea? He's like, there's uh, there's Dora and there's Diego. And he's like, man, Dora and Diego are made up names, fool. Tell them the <laughs> oh, truth. We, we, we know he was like, about- yeah, he was like, he was like, he was like, he was like, he was like well, who's, the, who's the person who attacked you, Holmes? He's like, Boots. <laughs> <laughs> Boots is a made up name, so. <laughs> <laughs> why don't you go into incredibly descriptive detail about. <laughs> he's like, bro, you're messing me up. But the. Uh, my f- And it became a meme, the whole. My name is Jeff. Yeah. Like, that became a meme, and it's still, like, hysterical to me. Yeah. There's a. There's a. Back when Vine was funny um, <laughs> and alive. Back when Vine, I was going to say, it was alive. Like, it was alive. Because yeah. um, Vine is dead. Um, it was shot and killed. Yeah. Um, but, anyways. It's like the Chatter's Gambino. <laughs> <laughs> but once uh, it became a meme, there was like everyone, like, someone edited it together, like, everyone's moments in movies when you say what's your name like james bond or what's your name i'm batman or mm-hmm. and, and they just put my name is jeff every time yeah it's like, who are you and then like spider-man turns around and he's like my name is jeff and then he like flies <laughs> off <laughs> <laughs> or then it's oh, like man. when uh in batman begins when the guy grabs uh he's like who are you and when he says i'm batman he goes my name is jeff and then he flies <laughs> off <laughs> so that became like a meme like <laughs> It's so funny to me that it actually became a meme. So yeah. I, I think that's funny. And I even think the dumber jokes that they say in the movie that like they say some like when he's like, dude, when you throw the grenade at the end of the movie, he's like, yeah. say something cool. And he's like, something cool. <laughs> and he throws it like I still laugh. That's yeah. so silly, but it's really funny. I also love the sound poetry scene. Uh, oh, <laughs> as someone who's done sound, <laughs> as someone who's done poetry and has done slam poetry, because I ha- I've told you that, right? Yeah. I actually like did like competed in stuff with mm-hmm. that stuff and I did all right. But that killed me, too, yeah. as someone who they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. And they're like feeling real it deep, and stuff. Real deep, yeah. Dude, it, and you know it kills me too, because uh, this uh, rewatching it now. And what happened was I watched this movie. This came out like my junior year of high school. Um, and I watched this movie so much, or my junior to senior year, it was actually my senior year of high school. I watched the movie so much back then, like I kind of like had to take a break and like not watch for a while. So like rewatching it now and like actually like pledging for its fraternity and seeing how like the whole yeah. fraternity experience, um, through, like the hazing and all that stuff, it just like. Brought back like the reminiscence, like hey, I'm going through all that stuff too. Um, so I don't know, it was just hilarious. I love the blonde guy that he meets, the, that he becomes his best friend. Oh yeah, and yeah, yeah. They have like they relate on everything. They're like, bro, 
bro, bro. Yeah. They keep pointing at things, and yeah. they, they, they become like the Lucas brothers, uh, or I guess in the movie the key the key the Keith brothers or whatever. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. They become that to almost to an extent. Um, yeah, it was just I don't know, man. This movie, this movie is almost probably one of the best like college movies too, because you won't get a lot of those. Um, That's a good point. Yeah, or yeah. when you get them, they're always like kind of too much in my opinion kind of cringy yeah uh i like uh and i love uh this and then accepted and then of course like the original like i guess kind of comedy the college comedy i can't remember the name of it uh whatever you know animal house animal house yeah okay but those and accepted except i don't know if you've seen accepted but like that's one it's like this real low-key one is jay baruchel it came out 2006 like nobody Uh, has seen it but like i remember watching that distinctly as a kid like laughing my ass off so that this and 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 like those three movies are probably the three best college comedies I think. Yeah. Of all time. Yeah, dude, I I can't stop talking about how much I love this movie. It's awesome and it's it's really one of the best like part 1 and part 2s of uh, almost any movie. I I, I love it. And they really, I really shot really themselves it. in the foot by like the the whole end credit thing. <laughs> that end credits is hysterical. Yeah. I forgot about that, dude. Yeah, it's fire. But then like at the same time, they're not really gonna be able to make a twenty three Jump Street now, right? Like, they do like Jump Street in space. They do like a yeah, bunch of like yeah. crazy. Ones. They have like over forty ones. Um, we we could also I guess talk about how they they were gonna spin this off into the Men in Black franchise during that one weird period yeah. of Hollywood. <laughs> are they still doing that um i don't think so i think that's dead bro i think oh, yeah because aren't they doing men in, they're doing men in black with uh chris, chris hemsworth and uh tessa thompson. tessa thompson yeah which i think is way better if you would have asked me bro and again i know they like they were spoofing bad boys but would have really way made way more sense of instead of it being a Men in Black and and uh, Drum Street, it should have been a Bad Boys and Jump Street crossover, you know? Like That's a good that point. That would have been 10 times better. And they're both Sony, so I don't know why it didn't, that didn't like, happen. Uh, but to me, that would have been 100 times better because you would have got like the real, the serious you know, people who playing against like the, spar- the parody of the, the spoof versions of them. Um, but they, they, I don't know why that never... <laughs> they can't even get a Bad Boys 3 movie made, so... They gotta, I was going to say, are they even doing that still? Yeah, Bad they Boys have a, for Life. Come they on, have y'all. a date, but they still... Yeah, I don't yeah, even play, think they're shooting yeah, they play it. They're in January in 2020, bro. Oh, January my God. January 2020. Where's he at? Martin yeah, Lawrence. Martin Lawrence. <laughs> Where's Martin Lawrence, man? Ah, damn. Uh, Will Smith... We can do a Where is Waldo with Martin Lawrence, yeah, man. Will Smith has been chilling on YouTube now, so... Uh, let's jump into our final movie that we're going to talk about, Lord and Miller, which <laughs> I always say stuff like this, but it might be my favorite one. <laughs> <laughs> I love, 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 love the Lego movie. I adore this movie. I didn't see it in theaters when it came out because to me it sounded stupid and I didn't want to see it. I think that's the theme in like all of Chris, Phil, Phil Lord and Chris Miller's like filmography. That's like, a good point. Cryo for Chance and I remember Ball. seeing 21 and 22 in theaters though. I think I saw that. Well, but... no, I mean, but like the, when they announced it, it's like, what the fuck? Are you oh, announcing? yeah. Like, like Cryo for Chance that was and Meatballs. So- that was yeah. Han Solo. That was Han Solo too. Yeah. I heard it yeah. and I was like, that's dumb. And they were like, Lord and Miller. And I'm like, all right. Yeah. Uh, I'll wait. I'll wait. Yeah. Yeah. But. The Lego movie, I had no expectations, but then um, eventually I rented it and I watched it at home. I lost it, man. I, like, as a nerd, as a, as a, as a kid who used to collect Legos, as someone who loves, like, superheroes, as someone who loves these tropes that they bring up because they bring up so many tropes in it, mm-hmm. I adore this movie. It might be, like, it's one of my favorite anime movies in, in, the, in the 2000s. Like straight up in the whole two thousand uh, over some Pixar stuff? over some Pixar stuff, wow, yeah. Right. I personally, right? This is this is personal, right, man. Right. Don't take this shit personal, bro. Nah, <laughs> you're gonna DC fan hating me, bro. <laughs> you're, gonna do, you're gonna come at me and be like, "Yo, I'm gonna kill you, bro." <laughs> you um, don't like Pixar movies? <laughs> How dare you? But this movie is so funny to me. It's, yeah. it's just so many different things and tropes that they do in this movie that is just hysterical. I, I adore this movie for so many levels. And again, they play with the the stuff that we talked about with Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Yeah. As far as how do you deal with simple concepts for children, but also funny, captivating for adults, mm-hmm. but also not just concepts, but a message at the end of the movie. And I right. feel like they deliver on all those fronts mm-hmm. perfectly. What are your thoughts on this movie? Like, uh, right? Yeah, I, I like this. Again, This I actually didn't see this one in theaters either. Um, weirdly enough, although I do remember very distinctly, actually, 
uh, one of my first memories of like getting to know you as a Schmoes No personality was hearing your podcast with JTE when you guys talked that's about That's right. Those. That's yeah. totally true. <laughs> I think that's actually when I first saw it. I think it was first or second time. I forget. Mm. But you're right. I did talk about that on the JTE yeah. things. I remember just being in high school and like listening. I was like, what? who's this new guy? And then like heard you on JTE. And you're like, I hate this guy. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> this shit is whack. Nah. I'm going to turn this shit off. Nah, man. You were one of the first guests on this podcast too, right? Or one of the... First or, guest on... On, on JT Movie Yeah, JT for out. JT Movie Ticks, I was one of his first guests. And we started JT Movie News where we just talked about the news. Yeah, for, we did it yeah. for like a, a month or two. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it was just us going back and forth on the news. Because JT and I like were massive film fans and we, we disagree on a lot of stuff. But yeah. then we... I don't know. Yeah. I, I feel like... I have a, I have like, I'm back, I'm, I'm super opinionated, yeah. as you can tell from listening to this podcast. <laughs> so every, every time someone comes up something in the news, like, yeah. I'm always going to have an opinion. Right, like, there's right. people on Movie Talk and stuff who are like, oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I think that blah, 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 blah. And I just go <laughs> off. But yeah, man, JT, shout out to JT and, and, J, and RIP. Yeah. <laughs> movie News, JT Movie News. Hey, but JT Movies thinks it's still, it's still going. Channel. Hey, it's uh, still on the channel, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, every, every couple of weeks, I think he posts every Friday at 10 a.m. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, but yeah, no, I uh, yeah, I remember you talking about that movie, and the, you actually, you and JT talking about it actually convinced me like go out and, and watch it. So, no way, uh, yeah, 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 that's yeah. amazing, man. Yeah. <laughs> I so, did something. Yeah, yeah, you did. I something, accomplished. Bro, and now something. we're here today. Uh, 30, and what'd you think? Uh, I like this movie, man. I like. I love this movie. Actually, this is probably you're right. It's one of the better animated films, and I think they really capture the spirit of like, of again, like the the outsider trying to break the norm be his own person and, and how everybody is always like conforming to these standards of like living the certain type of way and then the main character in this movie played by Chris Pratt is just a construction worker he's trying to break out of that mode trying to build something himself um, and I really admire that again another message that um, kind of resonates not I guess not only through the, the kids movies that Phil Lauren Chris Miller do but I guess through their Jump Street movies as well as uh, too so uh, I, again this is like really is really spunky it's really funny um, I like that they incorporated the existing DC, or not just DC characters, but of course like Lego Batman, but all the other all the other uh, 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 Lego characters, and make it like this whole world out of it, and kind of play into like the whole uh, mystical like world building elements of it. Um, even with like Morgan Freeman playing playing God, you know. <laughs> so all of it, all of it, like uh, or not God, but he plays. Like he plays wizard. like a wise old wizard. Yeah, a wise old wizard. Yeah, but again, it's the same kind of again another stereotype that they like incorporate, but it's funny and they subvert it in like a weird kind of way. Um, so I just I really I really this is probably and this came out with like 2014, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This I think this literally came out the same month as 22 Jump Street. Yeah, 2014. Yeah. Yeah, the same same year, same month. I think almost. Um, um, I think it came out February, right? Oh, did it? Yeah, oh, it 7th been. of February. Oh, February, okay. And then I think The Jump Street came out in June or something like that. Yeah. Um, either way, though, great, great, like, this is a great film. And, and of course, it didn't, it got the acclaim, like, critically, but it didn't get, like, the awards recognition. It was, w- it was one of the most, like, you know, it was one of the biggest snubs we've had in a while. Because every, critics enjoyed it, fans enjoyed it, it made money. And, and for some reason, here we go again with the Academy... The Academy like kind of, you know, raised their nose ups in the air for it. They were yeah. just like, "This is far too silly for us Academy members." Yeah. It's well, I, don't like, even know, I don't even know if it's silly. I think I, they were just like they were, I think I think so. I think it was more. I, or me you think personally, it was more I think corporate? it was corporate. Yeah, I think it was more like, "Oh, we don't want to give a movie called the Lego Movie an, an animated feature, whatever." You know, so. I, it could be both. I don't know. I, I feel like they they probably didn't like the silliness either. I, I I just I think it's great, and I think it's un, unfair to. Let's just say there's a lot of politics going on behind with animation studios too. Oh I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, this was I mean, really one of the first major major Warner Brother animated films to pop off since like well like Iron Giant they did a long time ago, but like this and of course they stuck with like the home releases and the and the. And the um, DC properties, but like this is one of their first major, like big release films, and they put a lot more concentration on that ever since. So that's why we have Lego Batman movie, Lego Ninjago. Um, so it kind of spun off this whole universe of films that we're still living with today. Yeah, absolutely. And and it gave a lot of uh, what I love about this movie is that we have our official main character, Chris Pratt, he plays Emmett, but we have so many different rotating door characters who just mm-hmm. come in and out for like a cameo who come in and out for like a funny moment from a funny scene 
and it's great. Obviously, a recurring character in the movie who eventually got his own spinoff movie was Lego Batman, yeah, who's played by Will Arnett, and he's hysterical in the movie because mm-hmm. he's just a stereotype of Batman. Right. <laughs> he's literally just playing up all his stereotypes about like how he has a, I have a dark childhood and I have some really deep thoughts, but I'm Batman, so I'm going to do cool things. And he's like doing cool things and he's like, um, I love when he throws a batarang. He's like throwing a million batarangs and he's like, yeah. first try, because I'm Batman. And he just keeps saying right, that right, over. Right, right, first try. Yeah. First try. <laughs> um, but they have him as a recurring character. They have like the female love interest play that character, but she's like a badass kind of like, right. she's like a hybrid of like Trinity. Mm-hmm. Um, her name is Lucy in the movie, Wild Style. Right, right. Uh, but she's like a hybrid of like Trinity and like the stereotypical like, um, right. you know, female love interest who's like really yeah, cool and really badass, badass yeah. but has like a tragic backstory as well right but they play up those tropes and those themes and those mm-hmm. stuff that we always see in superhero movies and action it's, movies. it's the hero journey story like they they play it beat by beat like the the whole like 12 part hero journeys thing that you see in like every movie star wars matrix um all the way down to like the mystical wizard that like you said the love interest the woman is the temp is the temptress all these different like beasts like the crossing the threshold like you know, ban- like leaving your post and never coming back. It's all literally the exact steps of like the hero journey story. They just put into this, but then make it like a more. And again, you, you like you said in the beginning, like they make it simple so it's easy to understand. But it's also very much making fun of it and making it so adults can understand like how fake and absurd it is. Yeah. Uh, and it, they, 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 you know, you, like you said, like they're touching the fourth wall and like not really touching it. Um, in the same way of like having. Uh, the Morgan Freeman wizard character always be floated down in like those little strings. <laughs> yeah. You know, it kind of removes like the realism from it. It makes you know that you're watching a bunch of toys being played with. And they, they play with the aesthetic really well, I think. Yeah, I mean, the animation it has to go mentioned because this animation is incredible. It's, it's obviously computer animated, but it's made to look like stop motion animation. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't officially go into stop motion. A lot of people wanted it to be stop motion, but... For anyone who doesn't know, stop motion is incredibly, yeah. incredibly difficult that to do. That would have been crazy to see for this movie. Yeah, <laughs> it's for very hard parts. to do. I just uh, watched Isle of Dogs uh, there you today. Go. Yeah, and that's also a movie that was very meticulously like handled when it came to animation, uh, stop motion animation. Yeah. Um, so. But this, I mean, obviously, the, the like everything is made of like Lego bricks. So when someone yeah. gets shot, you get like they explode. Right, right. It's funny because you don't have to make it you can make it violent but you don't have to right. you know be afraid of like it's gonna be too violent like it's funny to do that mm-hmm. um and then obviously fire you see lego fire lego water lego everything mm-hmm. so for me that it, it, it it's it, it continues to play with the idea of like these are legos mm-hmm. and this is a lego world that we're living in which is great right um right. one of my favorite things in the movie is um one of my favorite characters in the movie is uh unikitty yeah, Unikitty, played by Allison yeah, Brie. Yeah, Unikitty is clutch, bro. <laughs> Unikitty is that MVP, though. <laughs> I love Unikitty, man, because she plays the stereotype of like I'm the bubbly female character, and I'm here to like be the favorites for all the little girls. Right, right, <laughs> and right. she plays up that stereotype so much, mm-hmm. and then she goes into what's her place, Crazy Cuckoo Land? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Where everything is wonderful and beautiful, yeah, and no yeah. one says anything bad, and it's it's really it's just a cute funny way to talk about how ridiculous the stereotypes of little girl toys and little girl stuff is yeah Yeah, it's like the hello kitty and the hello kitty uh, my little pony stuff like all this stuff is like so ridiculously like purple pink and beautiful and it's just like so like you get it that they're like telling you like this is kind of silly that we're making little girls like this shit yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but i i love her character because she she plays a, a big hand in the movie and she eventually sees the destruction of crazy cuckoo land which is heartbreaking for her yeah. um but she has one of my favorite yeah. lines when it's like distract the distract the business meeting but she's like i don't know what to do and then it cuts to her and she's like business 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 <laughs> and then it, it cuts to the the board meeting and yeah. they're all like yay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it doesn't matter what yeah. she's <laughs> Um, I, I love this movie, man. Uh, and yeah. 
And then know. obviously Superman is oh uh, Jonah Hill. And Channing then, Tatum plays Superman. Oh Chan. Oh Chan. And then Jonah, Jonah Hill, Hill plays Green Lantern. Lantern. Okay. And Green Lantern is always trying to kiss up to Superman. And yeah. Superman's like, "Yeah, chill, man. Chill, chill." And he's like, "Yeah, <laughs> Superman. I mean, I can still be your sidekick if you want." And he's like, "No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm Superman." I'm Superman, bro. Yeah. And he's like doing that stuff. Uh, Wonder Woman comes out. Oh, uh, the, the Star Wars, Billy D. Williams came out. Yes. To play the, the, the Lando cameo. That's right. Uh, yeah. With the, if, uh, Harrison Ford didn't reply, reply, reply uh, uh, Solo, but they had the whole Millennium Falcon there and stuff. Yeah. That was nice I freaked out in that scene. Yeah, yeah, I lost yeah, it. I was like, yeah. this, too, this is like literally my childhood, my style of comedy, like everything coming to life i would love to see them take this movie and then revoice it with uh donna glover is i'm just kidding okay <laughs> special edition joke yeah, yeah. Was, yeah but uh no that i i love that they use like the other characters and of course in lego batman they use like Voldemort and like a whole bunch of other characters uh, as well but this one uh yeah this one i thought was just nice that they touched on the fact that they could they could get away with like different licensing and like <laughs> but what's funny too is that let's talk about kind of the ending of the movie and the twist in the movie i guess you can say right. where we find out the whole will arnett uh not will arnett will, uh, will, will ferrell yeah, sorry will ferrell and his son or his Correct. son is playing with the toys um, what'd you think of that um i love it i think well i think that's i think that's probably one of the uh catalyst to like wrap up the whole entire movie it's about using creativity about being imaginative and about um building and creating your own thing so i like the fact that it's this kid who is like literally locked in in the closet not in the closet but like in his basement like kind of hiding away his like creativity and, and worth um kind of vocalizing that through his toys you know through his merchandise and Really, it's a commentary on like how kids, even though as silly as it may seem to be attached to like Legos and toys, they really use that as an expressive manner to like f- express how they feel and and do all that kind of stuff. So I love this. It. It's, it's, it's tear jerker kind of ending. I think it really works. Um, it's not animated, of course. It's live action. But yeah. Like even even it still feels like in 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 pace and with tone of like what's happening inside of that world too i guess will ferrell lends a little hand into that because like we see will ferrell pop on the screen it's like whoa what like yeah, yeah, yeah. that was a little trippy but he plays the vo- he plays the villain too right yeah 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 but just what's his name then, in the movie he's like super businessman lord like that. lord of business yeah and president business <laughs> yeah right right and then again i think that's you know it's, it's a bigger theme of like him playing both the father and the villain like yeah he fit, like the kid feels like he's not getting his voice across and I think that's really that's a really important and like powerful message too so yeah. i really dug how like that kind of subverted the the twist of the ending and all that kind of stuff so yeah and um it, absolutely it really is funny and, and speaking of I, I forgot to mention the the song everything is awesome right, like right. It, it actually got nominated for right for, that's for my Acad- favorite that's you know academy you're, Award. you're gonna ask about favorite moments that's my favorite moment of the of the movie is the whole like everything is awesome song that to me just kills me like yeah. that's the perfect way to open the film too is like it is because it just shows you how like ridiculous like this whole film is like gonna be but it's still like charming and sweet in and of itself so yeah yeah, yeah that song's hysterical and it's uh i think it's Andy samberg and uh is it oh uh the 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 band or whatever or? yeah it's it's yeah. Andy samberg singing it right yeah yeah, yeah. lonely island yeah lonely island and yeah, I, I think, think. uh tegan yeah. and sarah sing it too oh really yeah i okay. think so wow. um but shout out to them for making an Oscar yeah lonely island's song. making a real like song for a different for a movie that they're not in <laughs> that's that's crazy uh i didn't i really want to see that pop star movie man i, I never saw it. i never saw it either yeah yeah, yeah. I heard it was really good though yeah, shout yeah. out to uh, Andy Samberg because they worked on Brooklyn Nine Nine. Brooklyn Nine Nine, yeah, just which got, is which got canceled and renewed in like the span of two days. <laughs> shout out to Brooklyn Nine Nine, man. For Again, another Phil Lord and Chris Miller property. Another yeah. Phil Lord and Chris Miller property. The pilot. We got two Latinas in there. Right. So shout Very out to them. cast too. Yeah. Uh, Terry Crews and the other guy, the other black guy. I can I can I can never remember his name, but he's great in that show. I, I, I I'm not gonna lie. Only watched like the first two seasons of it, so I felt bad when they canceled it. Like, oh shit! I always meant to be like, oh, I'll go back and finish it one day, but I felt bad when they canceled. It. I was like, oh fuck, I never went back. Uh, More important, Agents of Shield is coming back, guys. Whoa. Agents of Shield season six. Wow, who would have thought um, that? Oh, Last Man on Earth, they also directed. That's too, right. right. That's yeah. totally right. I only watched the first two episodes of that. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, not that I didn't like it, I just. But it got it got some acclaim though. It did it get did. acclaim, and a lot of critics. It's really written by Will it. Will Forte though, so shout yeah, out to Will Forte. Created by Will Forte, he's starring in it. Um, um, Phil Lord and Chris Miller directed the pilot for that. It's still going on too, right? It's still on air. No, it got canceled. Really? Yeah, I think so. Oh shit! Last Man on Earth. They they canceled Last Man on Earth. Just this most recent cancellation yeah. thing. Oh wow! Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Wow. 
Yeah. R.I.P. to that show, man. Damn, I thought, <laughs> fuck, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everyone is, uh, maybe pilot seasons, man. I'm going to be there. You're going to see me on one of these shows, guys. I'm going to be on network TV. <laughs> Ace hey. the Comedian. Hey. Because I'm a funny guy. You got to sell that show, Ace. Um, that's probably going to wrap it up for me. I love the Lego movie. I love all these movies. And again, I was talking to my friends about it. And the more and more... I mean, the reason we did this, guys, was because of the coming Han Solo movie. And the more and more I see these movies and the more I relive them and I hear the conversations that Lord and Miller have, the more I feel like... Uh, we could have gotten something pretty interesting. Whether it would have like fit the Star Wars tone, or whether it would have been <laughs> faithful to the Han Solo mythology or not, is kind of irrelevant. If they would have made a funny, cool movie, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And hey, man, yeah, salute to originality in these movies. I hope one day Lucasfilm will get it figured out. I think they need a little. You know, I think I think every new franchise needs a little bit of time where they play it safe, or play a little traditional. We like the Marvel movies. You know, the beginning ones were a little safe, a little traditional, but then they started growing and, and gaining sure. popability and reliability, and then they started getting weird with them. And I like, you know, not weird, but different, you know? Yeah. It started feeling like individual films, and, and, and I think that's what... Maybe Star Wars just needs that right now. Maybe they do need to keep hiring the generic white dudes to <laughs> fix their movies and then uh, maybe one day they'll bring in some a little bit of diversity in there as well so yeah spice things up a little bit yeah with that being said ron howard we're coming for you oh, ron <laughs> howard and then hey man that's like 18 movies yeah. so we kept this one pretty short this one's only what like an hour 20 something like that yeah uh, but ron <laughs> howard <laughs> we gonna try let's just say that yeah because uh let's just say we're gonna make the condensed version of mr ron howard um, yeah. because we're also going to talk about Deadpool which is Deadpool coming up this spoiler. weekend yeah. um, so shout out to that guys leave us your comment on your favorite moment in 21 or 22 Jump Street favorite moment in Lego movie what's your favorite Chris Lord and Miller movie we want to hear your voice in the comment section guys because that's a great way for you guys to connect with us if you're an iTunes listener shout out to you we love you we appreciate you if you want to jump on YouTube and tell us how much you love us Yes. I'm not telling you to do it, but if you want to do it, you're allowed to. Give us, give um, us one view and one comment. That's if all you give have. us one view and one comment, we will give you a look through the camera. Hey. <laughs> a, a special look. A very uh, 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 sexy look for Mr. RB3. Oh, I yeah. promise that. Oh, yeah. um, with that being said, guys, I'm Ace. This is RB3. And we are peacing out from the Peace out, guys.